Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for inviting me to uh, share my thoughts on this, uh, this um, topic with you uh, this afternoon. Um, uh, I've served uh, for a number of years uh, abroad as uh, Danish ambassador in uh, various countries in the Middle East, and my, my presentation will be based very much on, on my, my experience from that time, because at that time we were facing uh, uh, some uh, really uh, serious uh, problems in the uh, region, uh, and I was uh, posted to Damascus, Syria uh, in 2005, just before what we called the Khartoum crisis uh, diplomatically uh, uh, erupted, and uh, this is uh, on your left, uh, on the left uh, uh, of that slide, that's my embassy uh, burning just a couple of, uh, of uh, months after I arrived. So um, I really uh, had to work a lot with, with branding, and if uh, nobody, if, if, if somebody thinks that there's no country brand, I can, I can tell you there is, uh, and I'm going to show you how that works in practice, because once you're are in trouble, you, you, you really find out that your country, your nation, does have a brand. It might be called something else, but, but, uh, but there is definitely an image uh, and something as a diplomat uh, you need to defend. Now, later on, I, I moved to uh, Turkey, and in, at that time, uh, there were many uh, Turks who had strong opinions on, on Denmark, so also in that capacity, I worked a lot uh, with uh, public diplomacy. And, and in my present capacity, uh, I'm, uh, as you said, um, I'm uh, responsible for, uh, for the Danish uh, public uh, diplomacy efforts, uh, which uh, in our terminology includes uh, uh, um, cultural diplomacy. Um, and in that capacity, I've witnessed that tremendous search that has been in terms of positive attitude towards uh, the Nordic region. And uh, Markus Andersen just uh, elaborated on, on how that uh, that uh, uh, translate itself into to, uh, the various indexes. I'm not going to go much into uh, detail on that. Uh, but in a way, I've been, been, been in my professional career uh, working from, uh, uh, from a situation where Denmark was uh, facing burning rage, uh, literally speaking, uh, to uh, what is now called Nordic Cool. And the, uh, you, some of you might uh, recognize the uh, the, the wonderful decoration of the Smithsonian Institutes uh, in Washington, D.C. last year, which was the, the climax of uh, what uh, we have seen in terms of, of, uh, of Nordic uh, branding uh, in the professional, in the uh, cultural sphere so far. So uh, before I start, let me just say that uh, I'm speaking here about uh, a controversial uh, issue in, in a Danish context, so I'm speaking about the cartoon crisis in my personal capacity, just to uh, make sure that, that there are no uh, misunderstandings. But, uh, uh, what, what is happening when, 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 when suddenly your country finds itself in, in, in this kind of, of crisis? Um, well, I can tell you because uh, I was, uh, as I said, I was I just arrived a couple of months before. And at that time, uh, I think the brand, the image of Denmark uh, was the most positive you can think of. Uh, um, there were no issues at all. Uh, there was a, a, a warm, embracing feeling towards uh, not only Denmark, I think uh, the whole of Scandinavia. Uh, so suddenly seeing uh, uh, the kind of posters that you see there uh, going up all over the city because this was what happened. Suddenly all shops, even the supermarket where we were doing our shopping ourselves had uh, uh, huge posters uh, listing uh, various uh, Danish products. Well, actually, as you will see, there are actually some of them uh, which are not Danish. Uh, the the uh, Philips, for instance, is definitely not Danish, but some of them uh, uh, ended up in the, on, on the same poster. But this was a, a very concrete, a very uh, uh, a concrete sign of what has happened to our brand, and uh, you could also um, uh, you could uh, you could kind of read it out of these statistics because uh, uh, what happened was that Danish exports of consumer products, uh, especially those kind of consumer products where people have a choice. Uh, for instance, if you are shopping dairy product, you can choose. If you're going for insulin, you might just uh, whether are cartoons or not. Uh, uh, by the best insulin you can get. But if you have a choice, and, and consumers, they do have a choice. So this was, was the kind of, of experience that we, uh, uh, that we, we suddenly uh, uh, had. And, and we had no idea how to, uh, how to handle this, because this had never happened before. I, hadn't, I, I had not been on any uh, courses in, in public diplomacy. So we had to, we, somehow we had to, to find out how we could get uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, consumer boycott uh, to end, of course, but also to uh, work on the image of Denmark. Now, how did we do that? Well, we, we basically, and here I agree very much with uh, what you said, uh, uh, Markus uh, Andersen, that, that basically it's a question about getting people to talk together 
there's no way that, that we, there were certain things we couldn't do. We couldn't issue an, an apology because uh, uh, that was out of the question, uh, but we could do a lot uh, of other things. We could bring people together, we, and this is basically what we did. We brought in uh, uh, delegations of uh, uh, religious personalities, cultural personalities, uh, newspaper editors, all kinds of, of uh, people who could enter into to a dialogue with their opposite number uh, in, in the countries I was covering, not only Syria, but also uh, Jordan and, and, and Lebanon at that time. Um, and we, we were lucky to have uh, the Danish Cultural Institute in Damascus as a, as a kind of a neutral uh, venue for the, uh, uh, for the uh, encounters that we organized. And that was a, a, a big advantage uh, because of the, uh, well, uh, uh, the embassy was burned out, so that was not a good venue, but we had the Cultural Institute, but also in the sense that this was, this was seen as, as many uh, 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 of the local people as a neutral ground. It's an old, uh, beautifully uh, renovated um, uh, Arabian house, uh, and it's being seen as a symbol of, of, uh, of uh, friendship, of uh, support from Denmark to, to the local culture. So that was a good venue, and I, I worked a lot with the uh, director of the institute at that time, uh, uh, and we also did a lot of uh, what we call Mufti Diplomacy, uh, which was basically meeting with religious uh, leaders. Uh, I did that a lot. Uh, and, and they were actually also interested in, in, in mending fences because there was a feeling, even though the people were not happy about the cartoons, there were also a lot of, of uh, shame uh, by the fact that, that, um, that, um, that we had been attacked, that, uh, that this tradition, uh, this very strong tradition that is deeply ingrained in, in the local culture, that you're good to, you, you show hospitality when you have visitors, you, you, don't, uh, you don't yell at them, you, 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 uh, you treat them in a, in a nice manner. I mean, this has really been, been, been uh, this, they have not really lived up to that, so there was a lot of, 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 um, of goodwill uh, uh, in, in, in place that we, could, uh, that we could draw on. So actually, um, this was also a kind of a breakthrough for uh, Denmark in terms of public diplomacy. We had to reinvent, or we had to invent uh, how uh, we could do this, and, and actually, it worked. And uh, how can I claim that? Mm, I know that we have, uh, we have academics uh, on the podium, so you might not, uh, you might not uh, uh, um, accept what I'm saying here. Uh, we don't have any precise uh, uh, surveys at that time of, of, of the, the Danish brand. Uh, we could only see the, 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 the posters going up and then slowly disappearing. But, but there's, a, uh, I think, as a, as a cruel uh, proxy for, for the image, you, uh, you could probably look at the uh, the statistics uh, showing the uh, exports of Dany dairy products. And this is uh, what this uh, slide is depicting. And you'll see a dramatic, uh, this is only for two countries, uh, Egypt and Jordan. And you see this um, very, very dramatic uh, uh, drop in, in from 2005 to 2006. And actually we had to, uh, it took a number of years before we were uh, back to normal. Um, and. Um, in Egypt, it went, uh, and now we are uh, way above uh, what, what was the um, exports at that time. So we, we thought, and I still think that, that we managed somehow to, uh, to work uh, with public opinion. We, we managed to, to work uh, with, the, uh, with the brand of Denmark. I don't think we did, uh, we, we probably just did a, a minor a part of the, the work. A lot of things were going on independently, but somehow it, it worked. And it, it gave me a strong belief in, in in the notion of a brand of, of a country, because uh, once it's, it's damaged, uh, you see that, uh, that uh, you need to, to work with it. Anyway, there was another consequence of the, um, of the cartoon crisis. Uh, the, um, the Danish government at that time uh, um, implemented uh, and adopted a, a Danish branding program, uh, which, uh, which was uh, quite, uh, quite big in terms of, of, um, of um, finance, uh, 83 million uh, euro at that time. Uh, from 2007 until 2012. And um, we were not the main actors. Uh, it was the uh, Ministry of uh, Business and, uh, uh, and Economic Affairs. Uh, our part of it was mainly focused on, on uh, two areas, press uh, relations, uh, and um, it was also, uh, of course, to do, it also had to do with, with public diplomacy. Now, for the first time in Denmark, we. It was necessary for all the partners. We had never had a discussion about what kind of brand would we have in Denmark. Um, should we have a slogan? Uh, should we have uh, one, as I understand that our Finnish friends in Sweden have a kind of a, a global uh, uh, slogan for your country? Uh, 
actually, this turned out in a Danish context to be very difficult uh, because who should decide what, what would be the slogan for, for Denmark uh, and who should decide should uh, uh, civil servants uh, or should politicians, and if you ask politicians to do it, I think there would be many, many uh, different perspectives. So, so at that time, and I was not part of that process, I was still serving abroad, it was uh, wisely, I think, decided not to go for any specific slogan. The most important thing was to bring all the actors together who had somehow an impact on, on, on the image of Denmark, uh, how we were seen abroad. And it turned out that that before the crisis, the, the, uh, there was a kind of a, a, a very blurred picture of what was actually the, uh, what kind of, of, of profile did we want to have uh, uh, abroad. There was no, there was no, each actor basically projected uh, their own uh, vision of what they, they wanted to. If you were in tourism, you would go for, uh, for green uh, woods and, and, and blue water and stuff like that. And if you were doing a dairy product, something else. Uh, now that all came to not a new, sorry, um, there was a kind of a new brand, at least we agreed or, or the actors agreed that, that you would focus on, on certain aspects of life in Denmark, a state of green, that uh, this is a, a question of decoupling economic growth from energy consumption, the fact that we have many bicycles and the new Nordic food, and uh, Markus mentioned a lot of it already. Um, and I think if you look at it, uh, uh, you would see that, that it, were kind, it were kind of neutral uh, issues. You, you would, I mean, who would be against uh, going green? Nobody would be against going green. Uh, so I think it was wisely decided to, to, uh, to, to focus on areas where most people, both in Denmark but also globally, would, would agree that this is, uh, this is what, what should be done. And this would be uh, where Denmark could play a role. Now, the, the, the major component that we were in charge of was, uh, as I said, press visits. We had a, a, a lot of press delegations. We'd never had any uh, opportunity to invite uh, uh, journalists. Then we never had uh, a certain other countries that had been doing that for a long time. Suddenly, we were in a journalists would come here by their own will. Suddenly, we were in a position uh, where we needed to uh, make sure that they came. And they came in, in, in large numbers. I think uh, we counted about 2,000 journalists who were somehow uh, uh, part of the, the, the program that we were in charge of. And we had a lot of public diplomacy uh, events abroad, uh, focusing on, on mainly uh, uh, three areas, design, architecture, and sustainability. And again, because uh, uh, these were good areas uh, where everybody would agree that this, uh, these were, were areas where uh, a lot of work uh, needed uh, to be done and where Denmark had something to show. And let me just show some of the, the uh, the events that, that, uh, that we did at that time. Uh, this one is about uh, architecture, also a good subject because uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with the urbanization and uh, with, uh, with the, the, um, uh, all the challenges that, that, that uh, follows from that, uh, you need to, to be creative. And Danish architect architects are really, really uh, creative. So, so a lot of uh, exhibitions were, were done and uh, especially focusing on, on architecture. And, uh, to what extent they, we were also um, focusing a lot on, on design, again, an area where there's no, uh, there's no disagreement in Denmark that this is an area where we have something to offer. There's no disagreement abroad that this is an area where Denmark has something to offer. So these were, these were all areas that went uh, into, this, um, in, into this program. Now, unfortunately, it came to an end in 2012. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, as always in Denmark, there was a, a an, and um, evaluation, and uh, it's, a, it's a thick one, uh, many, many hundreds of pages. Uh, uh, independent economists were going through this uh, huge uh, program. Um, and uh, if you read the conclusion very carefully, uh, and this is uh, part of it, it's, it's much longer, uh, but I think if, if you, you somehow end up with a feeling that it was very difficult, even for, for these very uh, 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 good economists to, to, to show any any uh, um, evidence that, that the program had had a major impact. It had an impact, there's no doubt about that, because uh, just with the number of journalists and the number of, of articles about Denmark, I'm sure that somehow um, had an impact. There was also another interesting conclusion. Denmark did not change its place in the brand index. You, uh, you mentioned the, the actual uh, place in your presentation, and it was more or less the same. So. Uh, so after uh, 83 uh, million uh, uh, euro, uh, uh, we were still uh, where we were. Uh, but it doesn't mean that, that, that the work was, uh, was in vain. I think it, 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 it triggered off a, 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 um, 
a revolution in the way that we think in Danish diplomacy, that's suddenly you need to work with, with, uh, with public diplomacy, with cultural diplomacy. And now we, we're still doing it. Uh, we don't have uh, this, uh, this very generous uh, program uh, 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 that, can, uh, that can finance it. Uh, uh, so we need to do it. Uh, uh, we need to do it on the cheap. Uh, so we, we we work a lot with with, uh, with digital media. We 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 have a, a weekly uh, a newsletter that goes uh, out to all embassies uh, about highlights uh, of what has happened in Denmark uh, this uh, week. Uh, are there any cultural events that should be highlighted? And and it's basically ready-made stuff that embassies can use on their. Uh, if they are on the social media, most of them are, or in other contexts, they have to translate it. It's made in English, so they have to translate it into a local language if they, if they uh, want to do that. Um, and uh, we also into cultural manifestations. I mentioned the, uh, uh, the uh, this um, very big uh, manifestation in Washington D.C. We were not the main actors. The uh, main actors were the culture, Ministry of Culture and the Danish Cultural Agency. We were, we were, um, we were supporting it uh, in, in various ways. And again, funds are limited. We, we have to do uh, uh, the job without, uh, without many resources. But I think with, with, uh, with, the, uh, with social media and the fact that um, some of our embassies has a really, really good coverage. The embassy of Denmark in, in Dhaka, uh, Bangladesh, uh, has 200,000 followers on their, on their, uh, on their Facebook uh, account. Now, there are a lot of people in Bangladesh, so you might think that's not a lot. But those who are uh, uh, on Facebook in Bangladesh, those are people with influence. Those are people with, with, with interest in what is going on abroad. Uh, uh, they, they want to, uh, uh, to find out what is, uh, what is going on. So I think that, that the fact that, uh, that we have um, uh, so much to offer, it is never a problem to find uh, stuff to, uh, that can go into the um, weekly newsletter. There's an abundance of stuff out there in Denmark. And that has changed over the last 10, uh, 15 years. Uh, I think that... that uh, uh, was it you, Marcus, who used the, uh, the expression that it used to be a cultural backwater? Uh, so, uh, and it is not definitely no longer a, a backwater. I think that has changed, and, 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 um, and that is a tremendous um, um, advances for us doing this kind of job. So this is how we work with, um, with this. But there's also something else that has had an impact on, uh, on, on the um, impression of Denmark. And that, this, this is something that I've experienced myself, because I was surprised, for instance, when I served in Turkey, uh, that uh, Bonn, and we are, as you know, we are right in, in the castle that has uh, given the name to this uh, uh, television series. Why would, why would Turks be interested in Bonn? Why would, and, and of course, this was not a, mo a mass audience. It was the elite in Turkey. They, they wanted to uh, watch Bonn. And I asked many Turks, and, and they said, well, for one uh, uh, specific reason, uh, because it shows a lot about your country, the way you solve problems. It's really, uh, it's really a series that, that uh, a television uh, drama that shows that, that by consensus, by working together, you can actually uh, handle problems. They also, um, many of the people I asked about this uh, said that it's because it's showing the human side of uh, politicians. Uh, and uh, so this is something that, uh, that has a great appeal and I think it has, uh, it has a major impact on, uh, on the image of Denmark. And I'm about to finish my presentation because I know that we are, we are running late. So let me just, uh, let me just uh, uh, share with you my, my conclusions um, after the kind of practical work that I've had for, for many, many years now in this field. I mean, it's clear that Denmark is doing well in the brand index. We don't have a brand problem as such. And, and what happened during the consumer crisis, which of course for many Danes were very shocking and, and uh, turned out to be um, something that did not affect the fundamentals of, of our brand. It, it did in certain places of the world, but if you look at the brand index as such, the global one, it was not uh, affected. My own conclusion uh, in terms of how and why this happened is really that I think the, the, this strong uh, global focus on, on, the, on the strength and the flexibility of what we're doing in the Nordic countries. And there I agree totally with you, uh, uh, Marcus, that, that this is something that we share because once you are at a distance from uh, the Nordic countries, they cannot really distinguish. Like we cannot, maybe all Danes cannot distinguish between the various countries in the Arab Gulf, what is uh, Dubai, what is uh, the Emirates, what is uh, Qatar. That's exactly the same once you are at a distance. They don't really distinguish. They might have uh, an idea that, uh, that we are one region. I think that's uh, the fact that we have solved some fundamental problems. I think it's a great, great appeal that, that uh, we can draw on. 
Uh, but of course, culture played a major role as well. I mentioned the uh, television dramas. And finally, and that was the question we were asked to, uh, to give a, uh, an answer to, I see no contradiction whatsoever between cultural diplomacy and branding. That, that goes together. That's, uh, that's one of the same thing. I think I'm afraid I exceeded my, my 10 minutes, but uh, this brought me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>